Welcome to lecture 2 of uh, thin film deposition module. Uh, in this lecture, we will learn about vacuum technology. In the previous lecture, uh, we had discussed why is vacuum required for thin film deposition. To recap that, there were two reasons that, that we discussed. One was that uh, the lambda mean free path or the mean free path is higher if the pressure is lower. So, we create a uh, vacuum uh, to lower the pressure such that the mean free path of gas atoms is larger. Second was to, uh, to avoid a formation of monolayer of the ambient gas okay? because we are dealing with very pure thin films which will be used in semiconductor uh, devices. Okay? So, purity is of, uh, of essence here. Okay? So, we want very pure material and we do not want any of the ambient gases to get deposited on our uh, surface or the substrate okay, uh, during our thin film deposition process. So, uh, these two things are very important. Okay? So, uh, remember sometimes in some of the thin film deposition techniques, we will introduce some gases. Uh, we want to do some deposition in the presence of some gases, but first we take out any unwanted gases which is air, nitrogen and oxygen and then we introduce in our uh, deposition system a very pure gas that we want. Okay? So, vacuum is still very important even if we do not want to do our thin film deposition process under vacuum. Okay. So, let us move forward and learn about how we create vacuum. Okay. Okay. So, to create vacuum, uh, remember uh, we have this ideal gas law P V is equal to N R T. Okay. So, if the volume of our chamber or the vessel is fixed and temperature is fixed, to lower the pressure we need to reduce N. N is the number of atom or um, number of molecules of the gas. Okay? So, we need to take out gas from our chamber to reduce pressure. Okay? Before we go and learn about uh, different uh, types of vacuum pumps and how to create vacuum, let me introduce to, uh, to you some of the definitions. First one of this is throughput Q. So, the throughput is defined as a quantity of gas, you can say volume of gas at known pressure that passes through a given plane in known time. So, if I am passing some gas uh, through a plane in known time, how much gas has passed through is the quantity throughput. Now, this is uh, we have defined as volume of gas at known pressure. Okay? Why is that? Because gas will, uh, will occupy any volume that you keep it in. right? So, volume is not the exact measure uh, of the quantity of gas. Volume into pressure P into V is the quantity of gas. So, uh, throughput can be defined as Q is equal to uh, change in volume at a fixed pressure or uh, you can also write as constant volume dP over dt. This is my throughput. Okay? Uh, now, the second definition is conductance. Conductance is defined uh, as the ability of an object uh, or system to transport gas between two pressure regimes or two pressure regions. Suppose, I have two chambers, two chambers or two vessels connected through a pipe and one of these is at P1 and another one is at P2, then uh, it is very intuitive to know uh, to guess if this pipe in between has larger diameter then more gas can pass between these two vessels to, uh, to equalize the pressure or uh, because the gas will always flow from higher pressure to lower pressure. So, if P 2 is greater than P 1, 
then my gas is flowing in the left direction in this uh, pipe of conductance C. Okay? Uh, if the uh, diameter is large, the conductance would be higher and more gas can pass through. So, conductance is defined as throughput divided by uh, change in pressure. Okay. Now, in a vacuum system, you will always find you have to connect your chamber to a vacuum pump through a, uh, through a pipe, through some valves and uh, there will be different conductance for each of the units. Okay. So, if all these pipes or the systems are uh, in parallel, then the overall conduction of these systems will uh, of individual units will add up or if they are in series it it will be the uh, the inverse addition okay of the system so we want to have higher conductance so that uh, we can easily pass the gas between two systems um, the two systems we can define as our chamber and the vacuum pump so we want to remove the gas from the chamber uh, through the vacuum pump. So, our um, goal should be to increase conductance. So, while designing a thin film de deposition system uh, and the vacuum chamber or vacuum system for thin film de deposition, it is always good to avoid uh, long and narrow pipes. Okay? So, all the units should be uh, kept close together such that the pipe lengths are minimized and pipes are broader and uh, of larger diameter. Okay. Now, to create vacuum, we are going to use some kind of vacuum pump. Vacuum pumps uh, main objective is to remove the gas from the vacuum chamber or deposition chamber. Okay. The pump would be specified as a pumping speed. Okay. How much uh, amount of gas it can remove at what rate? So, pumping is the action of removing gas molecules from the, the system through the action of pumps. Pumping is speed is defined as uh, the throughput divided by pressure. Okay? So, uh, this S would be in uh, volume per second. Okay? That would be the unit for pumping speed. Okay, Q is volume uh, into pressure. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is an example that if a pipe of conductance C connects a chamber at pressure P to a pump with inlet pressure PP. Okay. So, we have a pump, uh, we have a chamber at pressure P and it is connected to a pump let me draw the pump like this. This is my vacuum pump and its inlet pressure is P of P, right? the pressure at the inlet of the pump. So, this creates a pressure difference and pump's objective is to keep this uh, PP low enough so that gas always flows from chamber to pump. Okay? And if this is conductance C, so for this whole system, uh, let me write this is pump pressure and pumping speed of the pump. So, the effective pumping speed will be given by this expression. Okay? Uh, remember that we need to increase the conductance. If conductance is high, then we can neglect this term in favor of 1, then this whole pumping speed will become the pumping speed of the pump. Okay? Pumping speed of the system, pumping speed of the pump. So, we should try to, to maximize the conductance always. Okay? So, this is for an ideal system. Sometimes these pumps also outgas. Okay? Some of the gas comes out from these pumps into the system. Okay? Or sometimes your system, vacuum system might have some leak. That gas is coming out, leaking through some uh, valves or somewhere, some joints. So, in that case, that leak or, the, or leak rate can be visualized as negative throughput. Okay? Positive throughput is gas coming out of the chamber, negative throughput is gas coming into the chamber. So, this is Q p which is negative throughput. Okay? So, this is my positive 
uh, throughput gas going out of the system, this is gas coming into the system. So, the overall throughput would be Q and then you can define this Q p as this. Okay. Now, there is some leak then uh, what is the ultimate pressure you can reach by using a pump with a uh, pumping uh, speed of S p. Okay. This expression defines what is the ultimate pressure can be reached. Okay. So, if the pumping speed is S p and the pressure of, uh, of the uh, inlet is P, then the ultimate pressure that can be re reached is P0. Because as you are removing more and more gas from the chamber, the pressure of the chamber is going to drop and at some point th there will be no difference left between the chamber pressure and the pressure at the pump inlet. Okay? That would be the ultimate pressure that you can achieve by that pumping system. Okay. Now, suppose you have a chamber which you have connected uh, through some pipes to a vacuum pump and uh, you have some leakage also. Okay. How much time it will take to pump it down to a certain level? Okay. So, as we had seen this is change in pressure, pressure is going down that is why we have used negative sign. Volume is constant d p by d t is the throughput of the pump and this is the throughput of uh, vacuum pump minus leakage. Okay. If you uh, solve this, uh, this expression integrate this and so you will get this expression which is given by this. Okay. So, where p 0 is the ultimate pressure p i is the initial pressure of the, uh, of the uh, vacuum chamber and p is the pressure at time t. You can see this is an exponential function. So, the pressure decreases exponentially. So, very fast in the beginning, but very slow towards the end. Okay. So, this is these are the some of the definitions which are used in uh, vacuum technology. Uh, it is good to know these because if you are working uh, on thin film deposition, you would have to deal with the vacuum pumps uh, once in a while. Okay. So, let us now go and look at various kinds of vacuum pumps. Okay. First one is uh, a rotary pump, it is a mechanical pump. Okay. The working principle is shown here in this figure. Let me briefly explain this. There is a vein, if you see this, this is spring mounted. So, it can contract and, and, and enlarge okay. and this is mounted on a drum which is not uh, it is not at the same center as this volume around it. Okay. So, when this is moving say in clockwise direction like this, this area will increase because this part is always in touch with this. So, this will increase and there is an inlet for gas from the vacuum chamber. This is my vacuum chamber somewhere here in which I want to create vacuum. So, it draws uh, air or gas from that vacuum chamber, it fills this. Now, as it goes through this, it compresses it and pushes it out this way. Okay. And there is a diaphragm and it is oil filled, so that gas can only be pushed out, it cannot come back in. Okay. So, this way when this is rotating, it is drawing gas from this uh, vacuum chamber which is somewhere uh, at the top and it is pushing it out. Okay. Uh, so, th this is a single stage rotary pump and uh, a similar arrangement for a dual stage rotary pump. Okay. Now, this vac these vacuum pumps can uh, reduce uh, pressure up to 10 to power minus 4 torr. The, the speed of rotation for these rotors and the vanes is around 500 to 2000 rpm. Single stage can go up to 10 to power minus 2 torr, double stage 10 to power minus 4 torr. Pumping speed, now this is the volume per unit time, it can be 10 to 200 meter cube per hour. Okay. Now, oil is used as sealant and also as lubricant. So, uh, if it oil is used sometimes this oil vapors 
can back stream inside my system. Oil will not allow air to enter, but oil vapor may enter into the system. So, that is a problem with these kind of pumps. And also, uh, these can be used as low vacuum pumps, but these are mostly used as roughing or backing pump in high vacuum systems. Okay. What does this mean? We will see in later slides. Okay. So, this is my primary pump or rotary pump. An improved version of a mechanical rotary pump is a roots pump. Okay. Now, roots pump, uh, it uses no oil. So, there is no problem of oil backstreaming. Ultimate pressure can be reached is 10 to the power minus 5 torr. It operates at around 3000 to 3500 rpm rotation per minute and sometimes it is backed by a rotary. Why is it backed by a rotary? Back means that there is a rotary pump which creates say 10 to the power minus 2 torr initial low vacuum. Then this roots pump takes over. Why is that? Suppose if you have some dirt particles and uh, in your system which are coming out with the gas. So, they are handled by rotary pump very efficiently, but roots pump the way it works it will it those dust dust particles or some larger particles may clog roots pump. So, it is uh, good to have a rotary pump as a backup pump. In roots pump you see there are two uh, dumbbell shaped rotors which rotate in opposite directions. Okay. So, as it is in this position, uh, my vacuum chamber is somewhere here, vacuum chamber, okay. it draws air or gas from that and as it is rotating, it passes uh, it to this side and it pushes it out. Okay. That is how it creates vacuum in the vacuum chamber. Okay. A similar principle, but these are very finely designed or uh, uh, matched uh, pieces such that we have to avoid any dust or particle coming in and getting lodged in between. Okay. So, this is about roots pump. The third type of pump is diffusion pump and the a diffusion pump can go up to 10 to power minus 10 torr. Okay. It is backed by a rotary or roots pump for the similar reasons that we do not want the initial uh, our uh, good pumps to handle the bulk of the gases. So, first we want to remove the bulk of the gases or which may have some particulate matter, dust etcetera by roots or, or rotary pump. Then we pump uh, switch on the diffusion pump, so that the load on this diffusion pump is less. Okay. Pumping speeds can be very high up to 20,000 liters per uh, per second and uh, again. So, uh, these have a problem of oil back streaming. Why? The way the diffusion pumps work is that there is a uh, oil which you heat and you pass uh, upward through a specially de designed nozzles and these oil vapors come out as jet streams. Okay. When the oil vapors are coming out, uh, these atoms or molecules of uh, uh, oil will impact the gas atoms okay. and by momentum transfer because they are uh, have a direction downward direction, they will gi uh, give the momentum to these in the downward direction. Okay. So, by just momentum transfer these jets are very high speed jets of oil, they will push the gas atoms down which are collected here and then driven out by a rotary or roots pump. Okay. Oil is cooled down and recollected and heated uh, up again. Okay. So, this is how a diffusion pump works, but because of oil back streaming, these are not used in semiconductor industry. There are still some use and some of the lab, uh, lab equipment you will find working with uh, diffusion pumps, but most of the semiconductor industry has switched on to um, what is uh, known as turbo molecular pump. Okay. Turbo molecular pump uh, have a similar principle of momentum transfer as diffusion pump, but rather than using oil or oil jets for momentum transfer, uh, these turbo molecular pump 
use a uh, uh, specially designed rotors okay a uh, design of the rotor is uh, shown in this uh, figure here and you can see that this rotor has many blades which are inclined in, in a certain direction okay so when this ro rotor is uh, rotating at a very high speed uh, these speeds could be 20 to 60000 uh, rotations per minute they uh, impact the gas atoms and because of this downward slope in the uh, in their de design they give a negative or downward uh, momentum transfer to the uh, gas atoms okay so and they each subsequent rotors keep uh, pushing these gas atoms or molecules downwards which is again taken out by a rotary or roots pump okay these are dry pump so no oil bag streaming so your thin film remains very pure ultimate pressure can be reached which is 10 to the power minus 10 torr pumping speeds are slightly lower compared to diffusion pump but still very good okay 1000 liters per second so these are used very extensively these uh, turbo molecular pumps the next category of pumps which is also used very extensively are called cryogenic pumps now the cryogenic pumps are a different principle you know that gas uh, tends to get condensed on any cold surface okay so if you introduce a cold surface in your vacuum chamber all the gas atoms and molecules will go and get attached to it okay once they get atoms or molecules get attached to that uh, sur cold surface uh, less atoms of gas are available in the chamber so reduced pressure so cryo pumps work on the similar principle that they have first of all they are also wrote, um, backed by a rotary pump ultimate pressure can be 10 to the power minus 10 torr most of the cryo pumps have two stages one is a metal grid which is capped at 80 kelvin and there is a, a second level which is activated charcoal which is at capped at 20 kelvin okay these are very low temperatures okay and these are inside this uh, cryo pump so as gas atoms and molecules come uh, they get trapped there at these low temperatures and they cannot go back into the system okay so you can keep trapping more and more gas atoms and molecules and create vacuum in your vacuum chamber however from time to time you have to take out these pump heat them up so that all the gas which is adsorbed on metal grid and activated charcoal is dissolved and goes to atmosphere uh, so that you can reuse this pump again for vacuum creation okay so regeneration is required and pumping speeds is limited by rate of impingement okay uh, remember the rate of impingement we had discussed if you introduce a surface in a gaseous environment what would be the rate of impingement so it is limited by only that okay there are several more pumps but these cover most of the pumps which are used labs as well as in um, production level uh, industries apart from pumps there are several other components which uh, are part of a vacuum system like vacuum fittings they should be leak proof okay there are different type of uh, vacuum fittings quick flange or corn flat uh, vacuum valves where you can control the pressure uh, by either uh, pneumatically or computer controlled or manually okay or you can close a valve or open a valve or also sometimes when you have to flow a gas into, into the system a pure gas then you can use a mass flow controller to introduce the gas at a controlled rate okay these are all part of a vacuum system once you create vacuum you also need to have a, some kind of measurement right so there are different pressure gauges which you can use in different pressure regimes like you can use thermocouple gauge or heat conduction gauge in the range of 10 to the power minus 4 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 4 torr these work on the principle of that if you have a heated element 
and more gas in a higher pressure more gas will impinge on it and it take away uh, more heat from this heated element okay so either you can measure the temperature or you can measure the current to keep the temperature same to adjust to know how much pressure is uh, reached baraton gauge is our capacitance manometer it uh, works on the principle of capacitance gas discharge and ionization manometer they uh, work on the principle of how much gas is being ionized okay so you take a small sample of gas a small volume and see how much of uh, gas can be ionized and you count the number of electrons generated if less gas less gas is ionized less electrons and you can use in uh, these and low in high vacuum regions okay so now you have almost all the components of a vacuum system how does vacuum process works uh, with time uh, remember uh, when we had looked at the pumping time we had said it has exponential relation with time right some kind of uh, exponential relation this is called volume pumping so in this stage you are taking out the volume of the gas okay now second slope is a surface desorption remember there is some gas which is always adsorbed on the surface of your vacuum chamber so once you reach a certain pressure these gas will start to dissolve okay then your pressure keeps going down at certain point the diffusion process will take over so this diffusion is gas diffusion through some joints somewhere in any curved surfaces so any tap gasel will diffuse out and the limitation here is permeation permeation means gas coming inside the vacuum chamber from outside through permeation through the chamber wall okay it could happen and that rates is around 10 to power minus 10 pascal okay to go below this you need to have very specially designed material for the chamber to stop permeation at this level okay and it takes very long time okay one more uh, point before we close our topic of uh, vacuum technology see this figure here okay uh, it shows that there is a clean and there is a fingerprint curve this is a pumping curve and uh, the pressure in tor if you see that with clean you in uh, 10 hours you get to 10 to power minus 2 tor i am not sure but at this level so this is not visible here not clear but you reach this level but if you have a fingerprint inside the chamber wall then you are not able to reach this level this vacuum level which means that a fingerprint has to be avoided why we always have some oil or some kind of uh, uh, moisture or something in our hands okay so if we are handling our vacuum system vacuum chamber especially the inside of vacuum chamber by bare hands we leave a fingerprint which will slowly outgas okay and create this leak and we will not be able to reach the final uh, pressure that we want or the vacuum level that we want so it is always good to use gloves while handling vacuum systems and vacuum chambers okay with this i'll stop our discussion on vacuum technology in the next lecture we'll start discussing about thin film deposition methods thank you